Somebody say amen to that. Amen. All right. Go and greet somebody with the love of the Lord and tell them, is this your first time being here? I'm sorry I'm moving because I'm getting right into the Word. Amen. I ain't going to wait for folk to come. Somebody say amen. amen. They, they usually come at a certain time. Amen. But we don't wait for everybody to get in the house before we do what God's doing. Somebody say amen. amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I know that's right. So if this is your first time being here, wave at us. We just want to say thank you for coming out. Thank you for coming out and being a part of our service. Thank you all so much. Give them a great big hand. And why don't we go and do this? Why don't we go and greet one another with the love of the Lord? Why don't we go and do that right now and just say hey to everyone and welcome to the abundant life. Somebody say amen. Glory to God. Welcome to, welcome to Abundant Life. We're mighty, we're mighty glad you came. We're one, we're one big family. Gathered in, yeah. in Jesus' name. Welcome to Abundant Life. We're mighty, we're mighty yeah. glad you came. We're one, we're one big family. Gathered in, yeah. Gathered in Jesus' we name. You. We know that you'll be blessed by the word of God. By the word of God today. Welcome to Abundant Life. Welcome to, welcome to Abundant Life. Yes, we, yes, we obey the word. So come and, so join, come and join with us. As we serve the as Lord, we, the we, the know, Lord. That you, we know, know that you'll be blessed. By the word of God. By the word of God today. today. And we, and we, and we just like to say. Welcome to Abundant Life. Welcome to Abundant Life. Welcome, 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 Stand, remain standing. Let's pray. Let's get right into the Word of God. Amen. Is that all right? I know it's Communion Sunday. Amen. But I think if you get the Word, uh, Communion will mean more to you. Somebody say amen to that. All right. Well, God is good. Amen. Amen. Grab somebody by the hand. Let's get ready to pray. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for the Word of God this day. We thank you, dear God, because you knew we were going to be here. You knew there was a word that we needed to hear that would help us live the abundant life. Dear God, we're asking in Jesus' name that you would continually help us to understand what you have for us. Help us to walk in what yes. you have for us. Help us to do what you have called us to do, walking in purpose and plan. Father, we give you glory and honor tonight. Yes. All glory to God. We Lord thank you in advance for the food we're about to receive. Yes, come on. Glory, Glory to, God. to God. Yes, come on. Yes, yes. We already know it's been made ready and good yes. for our bodies, yes. for our spirit, for our soul. And yes. for that, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. So this morning, as we set ourselves ready to receive, we are hungry. And you have, come on. If yes, you're up there, hungry. you say that I am hungry. I'm hungry. And Father, you have said in your word, if we hunger and thirst, thirst after righteousness, yes, we shall be filled. We, shall yes, be full. Yes. we will be filled in your Ooh, most holy glory. name. Glory to God. So Holy yes, Spirit, Lord. minister to God, and through us today. Speak to God, us so today. Help us to be what you have called us to be. Help us yes, to do Lord, what you have called today. us to do for your, your word, kingdom, for your glory, for your honor. In Jesus' name, Jesus name. Amen. 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 All right, you can sit down. Hey, you can be seated. Somebody say amen. amen to God. Glory to God. God is awesome, man. Yes, he is. All right. Glory to God. Look at man. I don't know about you. I'm just excited about God and excited about what God's doing in our life. And amen. Great things are happening. Amen. 
Somebody say amen to that. Amen. amen. We're hoping against hope this morning. Turn with me to uh, Romans 4. Romans 4. Let's go to work, man. Amen. One of the things I want you as a believer to understand today that you are in a war. Uh, you're going to see this sermon series start to turn a little bit where we get to the place where we've talked about that we're in a war, but I'm going to say something to you that many believers live as though they either are, what is the word I'm looking for, don't understand the magnitude of the war. Are, are you, are, does that make sense? I don't think we understand the magnitude and how we fight in life is pretty much insignificant. People have made what goes on in life really insignificant. And I want you to know that you're really in a war. And if you don't understand this, see, your family, I want to show you today, we may get there, but the devil does want you and he wants your family. You see what I mean? And parents, usually he really wants to get past you to get to them kids. Usually he does. And usually we're not even a gatekeeper anymore. We're just giving the enemy the key to get to our babies. I'm going to be real with you. We just give them the key. We just, here's a key. Here you go. Go on in there. Glory to God. Go and do whatever you want with them. Amen. And that's what happens in life. If you're not careful, you are successfully being a tool of the enemy. Well, I know I ain't get a lot of amens off that, but a lot of you are being tool to the enemy all because of what you don't know. See, because the enemy is, see, you know what I found out is the enemy is very committed, but you're not. Jesus was very committed, and he wants you to be committed. But you're not as committed. Now, if I came to smack your child, smack your child. How many of y'all got somebody, a child? If I just open-handedly just said, I'm going to smack your child, y'all do something to me. Many of y'all would. Some of y'all would look at me and go, why'd you do that? <laughs> there are some of you that would do that. Am I right? Some folk would go, what is wrong with you? Why you do that? You see what I mean? Now, me, I wouldn't do that. I, mean, I wouldn't do that. Somebody smacked my, my child, my grandkid. Matter of fact, I had a situation years ago, say years ago. Years ago. Long, 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 long time ago. You know, I heard a bunch of commotion outside my house. Glory to God. And I just, I just opened the door and looked outside there. And uh, I said, it was a whole group of teenagers and everything going down. My son's in the road. I don't know if he was squaring up or something. And I was like, what in the world? You know, all I seen was, I seen him, but I seen somebody else about to attack. So I attacked. <laughs> I mean, as I didn't even think nothing of it. I just went and reached up. I didn't even know who it was. I just reached up and was like, booze, what's up? <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I had to repent, glory to God. Amen, because see, I, I, I just reacted rather than respond. Right, right. Somebody say amen. But I reacted in a manner of, this is mine, right. and I'm going to protect it. Right. It's the same way that I physically, now that was, I, I, I realized I had to get that right, because even the young man that did it to, I had to apologize. Let's right. make sure stuff is right. right. I apologize. I didn't went to his parents. Now, you probably wouldn't have did that. I went right to his parents and told him what I did. Right. And he was, he was like, okay, everything's fine. And I was like, okay, I just want you to know, because if I, if I put hands on your kid, and even though it wasn't rough hands, it was enough hands, right. you know, I want you to know who it was who did it. Right. And if there's a problem or issue, you can deal with me with it. Right, right. I was a little strong. I was a little strong, you know. And, I, you know, because if, if he, you want to do whatever you want to do, but again, going back, and his daddy was okay because he, he felt he shouldn't been out there acting fools anyway. But still, uh, I don't commend that. I don't, uh, what's right. the word? Right. Condone that. Right. There you go. All right. But, but I ain't going to let you harm folk either. I ain't, God didn't call me to be stupid on certain things either. But I'm going to protect. Now, watch this. The reason why I said all that, and I'm not trying to tell you to, to 
you, you got to go out here and fight. We don't do that. But what I'm trying to do is tell you that there is a spiritual battle going on behind the scenes. If you're not paying attention, you're losing, even though he won. Did you hear what I just said? You're losing even though he won. Even though Jesus Christ won the victory for you, you're still losing. Why? Because you have not understood the battle that's going on. There's a serious battle going on, and if you're not careful, you're going to be behind, not ahead. Are you listening? All right. And your children are next on the list. Your children, matter of fact, as soon as before they got here, I was telling Nelson this before we came down, before your babies even got here, they, the enemy wanted to start working on them. He started working on your babies before they got here. You see what I mean? And if he's not careful, he used you to work on your children, to build things within them. You see what I mean? And so we got to get some things straight. Somebody said, we're going to get some things straight. We're gonna get some things straight. But we're gonna, if we're going to sing about winning, we're going to win. Okay. All right. Can we go to work? Amen. Okay. Let me show you a scripture so, so that you know where we're going to get to and where we're going to go. Because I'm going to work real hard real quick. All right. Is it? Okay. Well, it just feel hot. It's not hot. It's no, it's not hot. <laughs> it ain't hot in you, brother. Glory. I'm on fire. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. I'm on fire. All right, turn with me to, uh, let's go, Ephesians 6, Ephesians 6, I want to show you a few things, then let's go to work, Ephesians 6 and 12, Ephesians, I told you Romans 4, 18, but we're going to skip, we're going to come right back to Romans 4 and 18, but now we're going to go to Ephesians 6, amen, so when we get to Ephesians 6 and 12, say amen to that, amen. glory to God, God is awesome, glory to God, boy, we give it, man, boy, whew, boy, this is good stuff, man. I don't know about you. I've been eating and eating and eating, and I'm just, uh, I'm just ready. I'm just all week. I'm just, just, just ready. Somebody say, amen. "Amen." For we wrestle. Everybody ready? Read for me. For we wrestle not against. Okay, stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. For we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood. Do you get that? All right, amen. I'm not going to tell you anything different. You wrestle not against flesh and blood, but if you're not careful, the person that the enemy is using will become your target. Are you with me? And that person will become your target, and that is exactly what the enemy would desire for you to do. See, because then you focus on them and not who the real culprit is. Are y'all listening to me? And see, a lot of times, that's what we do in life. We focus on the person in front of me rather than the enemy behind them. Because there are certain people putting certain people up to doing certain things. Do you, you see what I'm saying? But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you today, you've got to fight. You've got you to know the Word of God. And we're going to get there. Why? Because the enemy's whole focus is to get you to walk in unbelief. Everything he does is to get you to walk in unbelief. I don't want you to believe God at any end, any cost. I want you to have distrust when it comes to God. Why? Because if your confidence is gone, now I can lord over you. Now I can have victory over you. You know, don't just come to church just to punch a clock. You come to church to learn. You come to church to be better. Everything you hear, see, Contrary to popular belief, every day you're being seated. Come on. Look at me, look at me. Every one of you, every day is being seated. Yes. You're either going to receive from God or you're going to receive from the enemy. Whatever you seed you receive will either diminish your love for God mm -hmm. or increase it, or I want to say increase your love for God or diminish your love for God. Right. Right. But you're being seated. Whether you not like it or not, you're being seated. This is just a great time for you to receive seed. Right, right. God knew. He said, God says, well, let me give them seed on this day. I know they all eat seed. Okay, here it is, seed time. Somebody say amen. amen. Why? Because the enemy, I'm going to get here today. The enemy really wants to get you to a place of unbelief so that you, let, let me tell you another little secret before we get going. What did I tell you? 
Okay. Hold this for a minute. Let me tell you another little secret. We're going to stop saying that the devil's stealing my joy. He's stealing my peace. He's stealing my stuff. He's stealing all my stuff. The de- and give me back my stuff, devil. I know it's not the popular teaching, but I'm going to tell you we're going to stop saying that. He ain't stole none of your stuff. What he stole was the word. Now the word contains your stuff. Are you listening to me? So you let him steal that word. See, I'm going to show you today, you're letting him steal the word. The Bible tells you he's coming to steal the word and you still don't protect that word. Your heart is the, your heart is the ground that that word's going to go in. And if, if you don't protect your heart, you're going to allow him to steal. I'm going to show you how he's going to do it today. I'm going to give you a few things of how he will steal the word. And when he steals the word, you now have a level of unbelief in you. You have no confidence in God. You can't trust God. You can't walk in God. The, God, the things that God said that are freely given to you, now you can't even receive them. You now should be at G or E, F, D or Z or close to Z, but you're still on A. How can you live 20 years in church and still not understand the Word of God? You can't be a baby for 20 years. Strong stuff, ain't it? Well, it's good. So I say amen. I'm totally baffled at the amount of believers that I talk to that don't know God's Word. You have a form of godliness, but no power. You try to teach me the word, but you don't know the word. Strong stuff. I ain't got a lot of amens on that one. You ain't the only one that know. Yeah, that's true, but you should be able to rightly divide the word. Can we get there? Man, the enemy's after the word. Man, it hurt my heart. We are not, and then you're agitated. Let, let's be real. Let, can I just be just, let's just, little, he just going all day, glory to God, whatever you want to call it. You should get agitated. And see, you're mad at me, but you ain't doing the work. Ephesians 4 and 11 still says, I'm supposed to perfect. My gifting is supposed to perfect you so that you go do the work. Come on, somebody. Is God good? So we got to do, not just here, there's every, the body of Christ has to wake up and do the work. Man, it hurt my heart this week. See, because you're called, listen to pastor, you're called to change the hearts and minds of people. You're called to be, say this, I am called, I am called to, be to be an influencer. An influencer. Amen. Your life should be better because I, I walked in it. Amen. Vice versa. Amen. Can we say vice versa? Vice versa. Your life, you, your life should be making someone else's better. Because you just walked in. When you walk into the school, them little kids, man, there should be a glow and anointing on your life that should change their life. Amen. Them kids just, it just ain't haphazard that you, you stepped in. Does that make sense? We're having, because I know you, you should be better. We ain't getting an amen on that? Amen. All right, come on now. Is God good? All right. And so we got to do that. We got to do the work that he called us to do. Amen. We got to act like he called us to act. Yeah. Talk like he, he we, I'm not saying you're perfect, you do everything right. right, right. But I'm saying we can get this thing. Right. Somebody say amen. amen. I, said, I said it at the end, but I'm going to say it at the beginning. Satan is still defeated. Amen. Come on now. Darkness is still dispelled. Amen. 
and Jesus Christ is Lord. Y'all better talk about it. Somebody say amen. Y'all ready? All right, let's go. Uh, now let's go to, uh, now let's finish reading this because I want to show you what we're up against because before the end of this series, you're going to see what may be troubling your home. And you may see you may have let some boys in. I already, I told my wife riding all of that, I already see things that are trying to get into my family and to my son's family, to my daughter. I already see that. I warned them. My daughter, my daughter, I got to tell you, tell you, I got to take a little side break. My daughter came to me, not, not recently, and she said, she said this, she said that, but see, she saw something. She not only saw that I was her father, she saw I was her pastor. Correct. Amen. 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 Correct. See the difference? Yes. See, see, you can't, and I'm going to show you later on, you can't receive from me unless you see me as what God called me to be. Right. That's right. Amen. That's right. You, talking right? you know what I mean? Amen. If you don't see me as that, we, me and you ain't going to be able to be alone too long. I'm going to show you that. So she came to me and she said, you know what? She said, you know what, Dad? She said, it's amazing. Everything you told me about this circumstance and situation was right on point. I was like, you know, I mean, I ain't do like that to her, but I said, yeah, daughter. And I said, since we went down that door again, let me tell you some more that's coming your way. Protect yourself. Watch yourself, because this is the angle that is coming. As a parent, you should be able to recognize that when you're, when you're being led by the Holy Ghost, you got to be able to recognize what's coming at your children. Oh, I ain't going to lie, amen. I'm riding with my wife the other day. I'm just talking. I said, I got to let you know. I said, okay. Let's, let's, let's talk. This is what I see coming at my grands. We have to attack it. She saw the same thing. And I said, this is coming at our grand. We've got to be on it. They've got to be on it. Does that make sense? The devil, the devil ain't as smart as you thought he is, but he's good at what he does. You're smarter because of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Y'all think I'm playing a little patty cake game. This is serious stuff. You come in church just to chill. The enemy's coming to kill you. I'm going to show you in a few minutes what that word kill really means. It doesn't mean what we thought it meant. Not according to what it was written. Somebody say amen. amen. Turn with me to Romans 4, please. Romans 4 and 18. But you, hey, victory is yours. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't finish out. I keep trying to finish out. But against <laughs> principalities, against powers. He says, this is what we're wrestling against. Yep. You know, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, spiritual wickedness. You have to understand there are principalities that are working in the earth. I mean, you can look at the level of hate and know that ain't God. It hurt my heart, and I was getting ready to tell you that real quick. It hurt my heart this week to hear how four-month-old was taken out of here and that the way that they went. that it was extreme murder. And I, and, and I'm, my, I don't know about you, I don't even know who the four month old is, but my heart ached. I, at one point I had to tell Teresa, we were eating lunch, I said, stop, don't, uh, oh God, no, stop. Don't say any more. Because all I could do then, and what we did was prayed for everybody involved because there's a whole big ripple effect that this affects, this just doesn't affect one person. This thing ripples 
I don't know about you, but my heart, I mean, I almost felt like crying. And it wasn't even, I don't even know the child. I mean, this just, just happened in our area. But, and, and, and I'm saying, Lord, how do we, how do we, what, what is going on? He said, we've got to get back to ministering to people so that they can have a way out. So because something was truly wrong when that person did what they did, they heard the wrong voice and they obeyed it. And then they snuffed out a little baby who had no wrong. A baby can only communicate at that age by crying when something is off. Remember that when you have children. They are, all you can do is change them, feed them, and burp them. Am I right? And then just keep loving. We've all had, I've had a couple kids that just cry, and you you like, I done did everything. You just keep hanging in there and pray and believe God. That's the only way they communicate. Somebody say amen. amen. All right. But that should have that should have said shockwaves through the church. That we got to touch as many people as we can to change the tide of the world. Okay. Okay, let's just be a church inside the walls. Amen. That's not what we're called to do, church. You're the church. You're, trying, you're called to get outside these four walls and to touch somebody's life for the better. We may not get them all, but we're going to get a whole bunch of them. And hope, let's go, Romans 4, 8, here we go, here we go. We had, picked, we had left here a couple weeks ago. Let's go right back there. Amen. For Abraham, let's go at the Amplified, in hope against hope, Abraham believed that he would become, okay, we're going to have to fix that. Okay, yeah, it's close. Oh, believed that he would become a father of many nations as he had promised by God. So numberless. Now, I want you to write down, uh, well, let's, 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 let's write down this. I want you to get something. I want you to write down that there are three things that God requires so that he can meet every need in your life. There are so many people going without. There are families that are tore up. Amen. Believing families. Now, here's the thing that gets me. Marriages are tore up just as much as they are in the church as out the church. That's a problem. Families are tore up just as much as in the church as out the church. That's a problem. Folk are not delivered in church even though they come to church. That's a problem. Amen. Somebody say amen. We're not receiving the word. That's a problem. Somebody say amen to that. All right, now watch this. But I want you to write down these three things. I want you to get them. There are three things that you're going to need if you're going to be able to receive anything from God. Three things. Write this down. Number one, you're going to need obedience. You're going to need obedience. That's going to be critical for you being able to receive from God. Secondly, you're going to, and then we're going to read Romans 4 to show you that. Then you're going to need faith. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. But he also told us in Romans 12, he said, or I believe in Romans 12 and 3, God says that he has dealt to every man the same measure or the measure of faith. So every one of us have the same measure. What we do with what we have is different. Right. Amen. Am I right? There are some people that progress more in life, doing more things in life, and you wonder how can they do it. Maybe they're doing more with their developed faith than you are with yours undeveloped. Can I get a witness? Amen. Victory is yours. I'm not, I'm not going to belittle that. Victory is yours, but you got to receive it by faith. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. I have to receive everything that Jesus did for me. I have to receive by faith. If I don't receive it by faith, I ain't got this thing. Come on. There, and look, you got to get to the point where you, look, change has, ha has to happen in your life. You've got to say it's time for change. You ain't changed if you're still talking to, oh, man, that's good. Thank you, Father. He brought me here. Uh, there is, you, ain't, you can't change going, still living back in the past. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? All right, now watch this. I'm going I'm to come back to that in a minute, or hopefully I will. Look at what he says. And the third thing, did I say faith? Yes. And then what was the last thing? 
<laughs> You're going to need a seat. You're going to need a seat. A seat. You're going, to need, you're going to need obedience, you're going to need faith, and then you're going to need a seat. You see what I mean? When I first came out, I started talking to you about how you need a seed to get in your heart. That's going to be critical. You are where you are because of the product of the seed that was in you. I'm going to be real with you. You are where you are in life because you're a product of a seed. Something you let get in your heart got you where you are. The way you are is because of the seed deposited in you. And then it took root and it, growled, it, it grows. Somebody say amen. amen. Look what the Bible says. All right, y'all ready? So there are three things. What were they? Obedience. Obedience. Come on, say the second thing. Faith. And say the last thing. Seed. All right. There are three things I need in life. Obedience. I, if I'm going to receive from God, I'm sorry. The th <laughs> there are two things you need in life. That's why I'm on that. There are two things you need in life. There are three things you need to get from God if you're going to receive from God. The two things you need in life are the Holy Spirit. You can't live on the earth without him. I mean, you can live without him, but you will not benefit the way that you should. Amen. You cannot hear anything from God without the Holy Spirit. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Everything you need in life is tied to him. Amen. Secondly, you need a seed. The word seed. The word, th the word seed is the very thing that you're going to need to live in life. Why? Because it has everything that you need in it. When God said, I will supply all your need, he already did through the seed. Amen. Now, you've got to buy faith. Now, watch this. Where our three things come in, I've got to obey. obey. I've got to have faith. Amen. And I have to have that seed. Amen. Does that make sense? I have to, come on, I have to have faith. I mean, I have to obey. I have to have faith, yes. and I have to have that seed. Yes. Amen. When I got that, I got something going. All right, let's go. Y'all ready? Let's keep going. All right, look what the Bible says. For Abraham, whom in hope against hope, believed. Now, this one says, for Abraham, human reason, hope being gone, hoped in faith, and which, which is really good because human reasoning will always take you off to the wrong place. Yes. Amen. See, because human reasoning will tell you how can this work. Somebody say amen. If you don't have enough money, human reasoning will say that you can't buy this house. Am I right? Does that make sense? Human reasoning, even when sickness, if sickness ever came upon you, and I pray that it doesn't, because you're fighting from a position of healed. Somebody say amen. All right. But if by chance you found yourself, you know, not well, one of the things will, human reasoning will tell you you can't get well. And that's stupid. Now watch this. That's stupid when you really think about it. Human reasoning will tell me I can't get well, but I was already well. So you have just taken on another side that you're not supposed to have. You see what I mean? Okay. Is that good? Man, that was good. All right. For Abraham, human reason for hope being gone, hoped in faith. See, there's a different hope. My hope now is in faith, in God, not in myself, that he should become the father of many nations. Now, watch this. Did y'all just see something? He just had obedience. Look what he says. Hoped in faith that he should become the father. Right there, he obeyed God. Whatever God said me now, God told me this, so now I'm going to do it. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do it. Amen. Y'all see that? All right, in faith that he should become the father of many nations. As he had promised, so numberless shall your descendants be. So God tells him what he's going to do. This is what's going to happen in your life. And now he has to do one thing. He has to obey. If God said it, that settles it. That's the way it's going to be. Everybody say amen to that. Amen. Come on now, come on now. Say amen to that. Amen. If God said it. God said it. That's, the That's the way it is. Ain't no debate. We over here debate. Hey, look, can I tell y'all something? Stop debating the word of God. Amen. God said it. Man, y'all stop debating it. You don't have to debate this. Just drop it at people's feet. No, this is what the word said. Boom. And move on. Somebody say amen. Y'all arguing about things you shouldn't be arguing about. Amen. You know, let's argue about what the Bible says about this. No, we ain't. 
I said that about somebody once before I got set up. I went to somebody's home. That's why I don't, amen, praise the Lord. <laughs> amen. And I knew they wanted to fight. You know, they will set me up for a spiritual battle. And I, and they, and I think I told you the story. They set me down. I walk in. As soon as I got in there, said, I was waiting for you. I said, you could wait all day. I ain't talking to you. Because <laughs> I said, it ain't nothing foolish and, foolish and unwise questions. The Bible says you should even avoid. And I said, well, we, why we got time to talk? I ain't got time to talk to you. You don't want to learn nothing. See, you got to be hearing in the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God already told me he didn't want to learn. You're going to waste your time. Man, I can't get them breaths back. I'm going to hold on now. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm holding on to a couple of them. You know, I told my, my, my y'all know me and Terry talk a lot. I told Terry, there are certain times Terry won't bring up something. I said, Terry, don't do it. Don't waste your breath, man. We, man, we getting older now. <laughs> we, need, we still need them. <laughs> Okay, that's a little joke between me. Amen. But no, uh, you know, I tell him the same thing. Tell you, I'm a, I ain't even going to talk on that because that's going to save me some breath. And sometimes I have communication, and then I go, man, I just wasted all them breaths. Well, what? Somebody say amen. Oh, y'all ain't never did that. Glory to God. Amen. You think you're wasting breath on your children too, but I'm going to tell you something. They listening to you. And sometimes they're not listening to you. I found out that children do the best, best learning when they watch you. So when you, when you lie, do stuff, they do the same thing. Then don't beat them up, glory to God, because that's what you trained them up to do. Boy, that boy's strong, ain't he? Well, no, sometimes that's what you're teaching them. By your actions, you're teaching them how to do whatever they do sometimes. That's why we have soft boys. Then they graduate to become soft men. Come on. And then women are looking for men who are not soft. Oh. <laughs> I ain't taking that one back. Marines had a look slogan. God's looking for, they said they're looking for a few good men. God said they took that from me. I've been looking for these men for a while. Men that will be able to stand in the gap. Be able to lead their families. And, okay. Somebody say amen. They're looking for, that's why I see, and see, some of you kept, you mind if I just spend a little bit? Sometimes, we get so in tune, and you start getting older in life, and you feel you got to marry somebody right away because you, your clock is ticking or something. You better wait. If he did it for Sarah, he can do it for you. Somebody say amen. The reason why you, I found out that people take down, they take down in life not realizing that God had better. So what we'll do, we'll go against the word of God and become unequally yoked and then want to pray to God to deliver me. <laughs> real begets real. Amen. God's going God's to bring you up because this image that we've painted of God may not be him. He's only obligated to do what he said he does in his word. People have told me, well, God does this. I didn't see that in the word, so I don't receive it. Does that make sense? All right, let's go. Y'all good? All right, look at this. But he did not doubt, watch this real quick, but he did not doubt or waver in what? Unbelief. You see that? Since the Bible says since he was about 100 years old, he considered the deadness of Sarah's womb, but he did not doubt or waver in unbelief concerning. Now, watch this. He didn't doubt or he didn't waver. That means he had faith. Amen. Does that make sense? Concerning the promise of God. Oh, he had seed. You see what it said? He had the word of God. Because he had the word of God, he now had seed. 
So he had the promise in front of him. All he had to do was receive it. Right. Somebody say amen. amen. Your life is dependent. Write this down. Your life must be one of obedience to God. We please God when we obey him. My life should be one of obedience to God. We please God when we obey him. And the reason why we obey him, this is very simple. The reason why we obey God is because he is God. Isn't that simple? The reason why we obey God is because he is God and I am not. Somebody say amen. amen. If you need any more reasons to obey God, I'll give you this one. The benefits are out of this world. The benefits are out of this world. There are benefits of obeying God. The Bible says if you be willing and obedient, he said you shall eat the good of the land. That's a fact. That's the truth. Just obedience brings me into God. Write that down. Obedience brings me into God's best. Man, that's awesome. Obedience, obedience to God brings me into God's best. God wants me to obey him. Why? Because he wants to, he wants to bless me tremendously. His seed, his word has seed. Somebody say his word has, his word has seed. seed. All right. One of the things that I have to do as a believer, I have to watch over the seed, the seed that gets in my heart. Turn with me to Proverbs 4 and 20. You've seen this before. Let's read it again. Proverbs 4 and 20. I don't take for granted that you already received this. Even though you have heard this. Man, that was good. Did you hear what I just said? I don't take for granted that you really know this even though you've heard this. So I'll teach it over and over as though you didn't get it. Because the fruit of your life should start to show that you got it. When I see that, I'll stop teaching it. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. But even after you which calm, the Bible still says faith comes by hearing. Amen. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. My son, attend to my words. We'll read that one. Attend to my words, or it says, in other words, it says, pay attention to my words. Consent and submit to my sayings. Commit and submit to my sayings. You hear what he just said? Commit and submit to my sayings. I'm, I'm telling you, you're in a war. And if you're not careful, the war you're in is a war of unbelief. And if you're not careful, it's going to steal away everything that you, you were believing God for or believing for. My son, attend and consent and submit to my sayings. Next verse, please, quickly. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. Glory to God. Let them not depart from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart. Why? Because... Abraham said, the Bible says he did not stagger into or in the place of unbelief. Amen. We have to recognize and understand that unbelief is going to be the first thing that shuts, it's going to be the thing that shuts down God. Look at your neighbor and say, unbelief, unbelief. will shut down, will shut down. God. God. Let them not, let them not depart from your sight. Keep them, let them not, let me say it again, let them not, everybody say it with me, let them not Depart, Depart from that what? From, that. from your what? Sight. From your what? Sight. From your what? Sight. Stop. You can't <laughs> stop seeing this. Amen. He said, see, because if we're not careful, see, we're putting a lot of other things before God, and that's going to be a way the enemy steals the word from you. The, your priorities are wrong. Your priorities, I, you know, you can look at people and see their priorities are wrong. God's word has become the second, third, or fourth time, fourth thing. When all else fails, let me go ask God. You see what I mean? It can't, he can't be second. Glory to God. Let them not depart from thy sight. Keep them in the center of your heart. That's what he said. Fight to keep it there. Other, other translation says that you've got to guard your heart. That means I've got to watch over what's getting in my heart. Amen. 
Somebody say amen. amen. Commercials, I got to watch the commercials getting in my heart. I got to watch. See, we don't want to sin. Some of us don't want to sin. Listen to what pastor's about to say. This is a little strong. Some of us don't want to sin, but we'll watch sin. Am I right? We'll watch the seed of sin. And so when we're watching sin on television, a lot of times it's a seed being sown in you. There's a, oh, the Lord. Okay, I don't. There's a reason why, you know, I knew this years ago. Years ago, there was an agenda put out by the LBGTQ, LMMOPQ community. Amen. And they put out an agenda of what they were going to do. And in the agenda, I kept it just for the fun of it. For years ago, this is years, years, years ago, they said they had to infiltrate Hollywood and other places right. to make it normal. That's what they said. And they said, and so now if you look, just to make it normal. And see, that norm, trying to make it, and people are making that normal, and when you make that normal, you're, you have just told people who were struggling in that area, hey, guess what, it's okay. It's okay to stay in your sin now. You know, they even made laws to project, protect that sin. They're not making laws to protect no other sins. Thou shalt not kill is still against the law. You see what I mean? Yeah. And see, don't get mad at me because I talk about that. You're the only one. You made a law to protect this sin. I'm going to tell you what God's word says against that. Right. Yeah, we're going to tell you in love. The same thing you fell in is the same thing God would. Yeah, don't feel ashamed or anything. God will bring you out of that just like he brought everybody else out of whatever they were into too. Don't be ashamed. God will bring you out too. Glory to God. And ain't nobody going to be mad at you. The only one mad at you is the religious folk. Right. They mad because you came out. That's, right. That's where you come out. Come, on. come out. Right. <laughs> and I'm right, brother. You come out. You don't come out. I'm this way. No. You come out. And because you ain't doing nothing but stealing somebody else's identity. Right. Walking around with stolen identity. Then, then you overcompensate. You overcompensate because you stole somebody else's identity. Yep. Yep. That's good, Pastor. Yes, sir. <laughs> I ain't a friend with the devil. I know I'm not on his list. He tries to kill me. He tries to blaspheme. He tries to destroy my name. And so guess what? And since you want to do all that stuff, you want to speak lies, you want to do all this stuff, you want to do this, that, the other, guess what, Mr. Devil? I'm coming back. I'm coming hard. I'm going to keep preaching and teaching the Word of God regardless of what somebody else says, regardless of what they think. Your perception, your perception of me does not move me. I could care less. You can believe whatever lie, whatever story you want to believe. You just eat it. Eat the whole story because the enemy is using that against you so that whatever comes out of my mouth that God has for you, you won't be able to receive. You be the sucker MC, not me. Be real. Yeah, jigger, jigger, jigger. All oh, glory to God. I be real. A whole lot of foolish, foolishness goes on, and, and 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 you can't see the devil for who he is. They are not children of God who are doing things of the devil. Don't tell me, uh, don't throw water on my head, the cleaned up version, and tell me it's raining. Right. You can't act like the devil and you say you got the love of God in you. That's a lie. You can't hate me and say you got the love of God in you. That's a lie. I can't hate you. Even my enemy, I, oh, glory to God, I want to take up a two by four and hit one. Glory to God, but God said, you got to love them. I was like, but God, he said, but ain't no buts in my word. 
Glory to God. Is that good? <laughs> God is awesome. Man, I ran out of time already. I got a few million minutes to go. Glory to God. Is God good? Satan is defeated. I ain't got time for foolishness. You know, you know I, I didn't get there yet, but I'm going to tell you, when people can't change you, they'll change how others see you. <laughs> That's what the devil does. If I cannot change you, then I'm going to change how folks see you. I'm going to call you the whore. I'm going to call you every name in the book so that she don't like you. So I can change the perception of how people see you. That's how I do it. See, I, I can't stop what's coming out of your mouth, so I'll just change how, I'll get in the minds of those who, who are listening and change how they see you. Because once I change how they see you, they can't receive. Can I get a witness? That's what the enemy does. That's how he steals the word and you don't even know it. Man, that's good stuff. Let's look at it. Let, let, can we look at Jesus? Let's look at it and then go down the list real quick. Because some of you call yourself believers, but you listen to trash. You read trash. Oh, let that boy talk a little minute right there. You listen and you read trash. And you ain't got no, you know, if you meditating on this word both day and night, you ain't got time for trash. Amen. Amen. Why you listen to trash? It ain't got no seed. Mm. Not the one you want. Can I? That's the devil. Hey, the devil gonna come at you anyway. You may as well unload every gun you got. Spiritually. Let them not depart from your sight. Now watch this. Matthew 13, 55 and Matthew 13, 55. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Glory to God. God is an awesome God. Man, we just get, man, we, hey, we're going higher and higher in him. Somebody say amen. We're going higher and higher. This word is not, look, even this word today is not designed to knock you down. It's designed to pick you and push you up. Somebody say amen. The devil been whooping you, taking your lunch, popping your bag for long enough. Y'all know that's old school. Somebody say amen. They take your lunch and poof, hit the bag. Because we, we carried bag lunch. Okay. <laughs> they don't take lunch school no more, do they? They don't do that no more? Your child does? Yeah. No paper bags? They, little kids don't know about paper bag. What's that? Y'all don't even know, uh, you know, I saw a guy do this. Oh, I got to go. I saw a guy do this. He said, what this, what's this for? And folks had a paper bag. He said, see, see, if you can answer the question, we'll give you, a, I think he said, he gave them a money. And he said, so what's this? And they said, a paper bag. He said, no, it's a book cover. <laughs> yeah. See what I mean? And see what I mean? And see, see, if you... He, and see, people got to know, that was book cover. We go to Acme, get that, get that paper bag, cut that thing right. You got to do it right now. And then you can tell, you can tear them up and then come right back with a new one, boy. That thing look good, don't it? Lord, they'll put math on it, you know. <laughs> come on, somebody. Amen. Okay, okay. <laughs> glory to God. <laughs> oh, oh, glory to God. How we get over there? That's old school stuff. Amen. Look at this, Matthew 13, because we out of time, y'all. Man, did y'all get something today? Amen. Hey, we on a battlefield. You know, one of the things I told Nelson come down here, I told a bunch, of, I told the military fellas, one of the things, y'all ever seen a movie called uh, Saving Private Ryan? Yeah. All right. Uh, there was one part in that movie that just irritated me. Every time, every time it come on, it just seemed like I get to that part and I go, oh, God. Oh, I would kill you. You know, where the boy, now watch what happens. The guy uh, is fighting for his life, fighting the enemy. And his friend, his soldier has the ability to come up and stop it and kill the enemy. But he doesn't. He freezes up on the steps. Y'all remember that part? And he did just like this. And then the guy, the enemy, just 
disrespected him so bad, said, I feel so bad for you, just walk right past you. The enemy went out and killed more of them before he eventually killed him. You see what I mean? But I'm saying when you don't do your part, you're allowing the enemy to continue on to hurt other believers in the body of Christ when there's no need. I'm just saying, somebody, okay, all right. Watch this real quick before we go. Y'all good? All right, then, then I'm going to give you a few points. All right, I'm going to run. I, can I run over five? Yes, sir. Y'all right? Yes, Y'all, I know it's football. I'm going to let you out in time. It's football season. You know you pulled a little something on time today. Glory to God. You know, I'm going to tell you something. You know, uh, uh, they just showed you that thing is totally rigged up anyway. Didn't y'all see that last yesterday? Yep. That thing was played for, for the get-go. Okay, I ain't going to talk about that. Uh, this is a word. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. Amen. Uh, when we're off school. Look, look at this, Matthew 13, 55. It is not this. Remember, this, I told you this on Wednesday night, too. It's not this, the carpenter's son. It's not his mother called Mary. And Now, we're talking about Jesus. And are not his brothers James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? Watch this. Not, not the one you thought it was. And do not all his sisters live here among us when they, where then did this man get all this? Where did he get all this understanding? He got it from God. Watch this, next verse. And they took offense at him that they were repelled and hindered. Man, that, that's just Jack Miller. Same with me? That's just Jack Miller. You know, Miguel got up, started speaking. That's just Miguel. See, when you put him in familiarity, you've just eliminated God talking to you. Well, that's strong. Can you be mature when I say this? Because I'm feeling led to say it in this term. When you don't listen to the voice of God, God, do things God will try. He, he's still trying to get to you. But then God will use the lowest form to talk to you. And that shows you. You remember Balaam. And remember Balaam, uh, you know, the donkey wanted to go the other way. I called it donkey. So I'm being nice. I did clean it up. And the, the donkey was like, no, he don't see this. Right, you know, right. He don't see this. And, the donkey, and he, he was whooping the donkey. And then all of a sudden, the donkey starts talking. He was the original Mr. Ed. <laughs> <laughs> Only old school know what I'm talking about. New school folk went, man. Look, old school, go like this. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's who I'm talking to. I ain't talking to new school. Google. Google Mr. Red. Uh, what color was Mr. Red? There you go. All right, all right. Okay, he got on your nerves, but he was Mr. Red. Sometimes God has to use a Mr. Red to talk to you. But be careful because you got to be careful. God's not obligated to continually repeat himself. And so you got to be careful because you can take the very thing, the very one God. See, this is what we don't understand in the body of Christ. The very one that God uses sometimes to bring us, uh, get us there, is the very one the enemy tries to get away from us. Because God is using certain people to help elevate you, not take you down, but help elevate you, and you move away from it. Look what he says. And he took offense at them, and they were repelled and hindered and acknowledged his authority and caused to stumble. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own what? House. All right. Did y'all see that? All right. Did you see that? Next verse, please. Y'all get that? Oh, man, I didn't give you. Oh, man. 
and he did not he did not many works of power there because of their their lack of faith in divine mission of Jesus so Jesus could not do even work that he needed to do now this is God in the flesh couldn't do the work he needed to do because of unbelief I tell you the war that you're going to be in is a war against unbelief everything that fires at you usually is coming to get you to doubt God somebody say amen, amen. all right write this down John 10 10 I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna read this to you real quick and then we'll come back next week and fill it in fill in all the blanks y'all getting anything oh, yeah. the Bible says that Satan now we realize that in this type of scripture that we're reading the scripture that we're reading he said the thief cometh to steal kill and destroy right now we understand he was talking about false prophets but false prophets get the, their uh, how is it stated their operation how they work they got to get it from somewhere and who do they get it from Satan himself how to operate a certain kind of way. So he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, recognize this. If he's coming, he only comes to steal. Write this down. He only comes to steal, and he only comes to destroy. And the ultimate conclusion of the devil's scheme is to destroy you. He only comes to steal and to kill, and he comes to destroy you. To steal, what he's coming to steal is the word of God. I told you that in the beginning. We saw that in the Word in Luke 8. Write this down before you go today. I want you to go home and read it. Luke 8 says, those beside the road are the people who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes the message of God away from their heart so that they will not believe in me as the Messiah and be saved. All right? So one of the things we know that the devil does can and will steal the Word. Secondly, we know this. We, listen to this. We understand that that word steal we know he's taking but that word kill now listen to this that word kill means to really sacrifice that word kill and we're going to talk more about that next week but that word kill is to give a sacrifice for the enemy will give you something so that you can sacrifice something does that make sense let me show you he will give you something so that you will sacrifice the ultimate goal eternal life He'll give you pornography so that he can use it to kill you later. You see what I mean? He's giving you things on purpose. To sacrifice, I will sacrifice. Let's look at it. Let's go to Matthew 4 real quick. I want to show you Matthew 4 and 8. Look at this. He will give you, the, that word kill is sacrifice. He's looking for you to give up something. He's going to, so he's going to offer you something so that you can sacrifice something. Right. I'll give you something, but you've got to give me something. That's how he operates. And every one of you, see, because the reason why he operates on a sacrifice is because that's what real worship is. Real worship is a sacrifice. You see it in Genesis 22. Isaac, uh, Isaac, Isaac asked his father. He says, Father, he says, Father, where is the ram for the sacrifice? He already knew what worship was because of all the sacrificing they had done. So when they were collecting wood and everything, he knew we're worshiping God at this time. Because anytime you worship God, it requires a sacrifice. Yes. Amen, sir. That's good. Man, that's good. All right, I got to go. I got to go. And again, the devil took him on a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory, the splendor, the magnificent, pre preeminence, and excellence of them. Next verse. And he said to him, these things all taken together, I, who says it? Who says it? Satan, Satan says it. I'll give it to you. Whatever you need, I'll give it to you. If, a, if you need a car, just give me you. I'll give you a girl. Just give me you. And he'll give you a nice girl. I'll give you a guy. Just give me you. See what he's doing? I'll give you the best job you ever thought you could have. Just give me you. 
See what he's doing? Just give me you. Whatever it is you need, just I'll give it to you, but just give me you. You think you got blessed, you, you just got him trapped. <laughs> my God, my God. Somebody say amen. amen. You got to understand that the enemy, all he wants to do, write this down. I thought this was kind of nice. Me and Teresa talked about it. All he wants to do is dishonor you. And the way he dishonors you, he wants to get you to devalue you. Because once you've devalued, you're done. That's how he deceives you. He wants to dishonor you. Then he wants to devalue you so he can dismiss you. Whole purpose is, I won't get rid of you. Just make you none effect. That's why I'm giving you what I give you. That's why I give you things. I'll give you, I'll give you a house. You want a house? I'll give you a house. How about that? Just worship me. And people are taking that box not realizing how deep it goes down and what the price is. You really want that guy? And he said to him, these things are taken together. I will give you if you will prostate. Oh, did you see that word prostate? That means you got to bow down. Yep. Amen. He's telling the king of kings, I want you to bow to me. I'll give you. And, and wait a minute. I made you. See, if you don't know your worth, you'll give away what you have. That was really good. That was worth more than them little weak amens y'all gave me. Well, you didn't give it to me. Amen. I'm sorry. I don't. These things, yourself before me and do homage and worship me. Why? I want you to sacrifice who you are so that I can give. I'll give you all this, but you got to give up all that. That's what Eve didn't understand. Eve didn't realize she had to sacrifice. She was going to give up something. And what she got in return was not what she wanted. Somebody say amen. Write this quickly. Two minutes. Amen. Write this down. There are certain things that Satan will do to steal the word. We already saw one. He's going to, the first thing he's going to do, he's going to try to nullify the word coming out of my mouth. He's going to nullify how you see, you see me. Somebody say amen. amen. Hey, your, somebody else's perception should not move you. Amen. Because usually their perception is, just because they have a perception, that perception is their reality, not yours. Amen. Don't accept their perception of who they say you are. Somebody say amen. amen. You know who God told you you were. Look at your neighbor and say, I know who God said I am. I ain't going to let you talk me out of who God I says I am. Hey, man, glory to God. I get up every morning. I know, man, you know, I know I'm, I'm wonderfully made. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. God knows all my flaws, but you, you don't. Glory to God. Somebody say amen. And you know what? In all my flaws I had, God said, I still love that boy. Lord the God, man, I did. I did. Look, I get I Man, when he wake up, I'm just like, did you have a good night's sleep, boy? <laughs> you know, God be saying that about you when you wake. I believe that. Amen. Amen. Y'all don't realize that he loved you so much. You know, right. he really wants you to have sweet sleep. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Thank God. Amen. And then when you, and when you wake up, he said, look, my boy's up. Look at him. Oh. And then, and see, you get up and be disrespectful, but God's already said, good morning, Siobhan. Yep. And you just go on about your way. Did you notice something about Jesus Christ? Man, I'm out of time, man. I can't, man, I got so much to get into. You know something about Jesus Christ. Jesus spent time with God before he spent time with you. Amen. <laughs> Check it out. He spent, before we leave, he spent time with God before he went and did any miracles. Before he touched anybody during the day, he spent hours with hours with God. So much so, the disciples was peeking. They got up. That don't look right, do it? <laughs> but the disciples got, 
they were peeking at what Jesus was doing. They was like, man, get up every morning. Boy, we even talk to us, and he's going down there. And then they said, well, let's get with him. And so the disciples get with him, and they said, Father, can you teach, oh, Jesus, can you teach us how to pray? Because something happens, because now remember, remember the, 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 the demon, uh, how do I say the word, the demoniac? Did I say the word? Demoniac? Uh, the boy that had the devil. He was possessed. And the man brought him to his disciples. He said, come on, man. There we go. Get him, get him, get him. Get him, get him, get that devil out of there now. You know, I brought him to you. Go on, get him. And they spent all day trying to get him out. Fasting and everything. No, they ain't fast. But Jesus came back and told them that. And he spent, they spent all the time. And then he said, and then Jesus come down. Now, see, where did Jesus go before that? Jesus had already spent time with God. He had already prayed, right? Why? Because he dealt with that thing called unbelief. Anything, he's not going to allow unbelief to get into him. Hey, why? Because he is who he says he is. Does that make sense? And so he's spending his time with God. That's why he's trying to tell us, spend time with God. He said, remember, and the, the man told him, the father said, I brought my boy to your disciples. They was with you. They went to church with you and everything. They sang on the choir with you. They took up offering for you. But they couldn't cast out the devil like you did. And Jesus said, man, how long am I going to be with y'all? How long y'all can walk around with a Bible and not believe it? That's strong, man. Amen. But no, see, we, we come, how long are we going to come to church and not walk out of here different? Come on now. This, these seats ain't just for, these seats are for better. These seats are for you to get learning and go out and make a difference. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Oh, I see. So he brings the boy to him, and Jesus says, how long, how long, y'all? Now he says this to the disciples. How long is this going to happen? But he says that to us today. How long are you going to put up with it? Next thing you know, uh, uh, right after that, he cast it out. It didn't take Jesus all day. Boom. You know, I was in church one time. It, uh, they, they, I seen the same thing happening. You, you remember that? Glory to God. <laughs> you remember that? You know, they were laying, girl was laying out on the floor, flipping like flipper, you know. <laughs> she was moving like flipper, you know what I mean? Up and down. <laughs> and, you know. And folk are like, come out, come out, come out of these men. Come out, come out there. Come out there, come out. And then everybody was taking a try. Come out, come out. <laughs> Nothing could happen. And, and, and I watched the man of God. man of God just sitting there. He just not moving. At that time, he was just sitting there. He wasn't moving. Then he just had enough. He just had enough. man of God got up and said, to him, get back, get back. Glory to God. And he took, did he take his little stick? No, he just spoke, and then he said, the girl was in the right mind. It comes through relationship with Jesus Christ. The same power that's raised Jesus from the dead is in you. You have the same power to speak to every, every demonic entity that ever shows up in your family's life and anybody else's life. You can speak to that to that thing. He should not be ruling you. You should be ruling it. The enemy doesn't want you to understand that you have authority over him. Somebody say amen. All right. If he understood, if when you understand that, you have victory. You walk in it. The victory has already been won. You just got to walk in it. Somebody say amen. amen. All right. Now, write this down real quick. Where'd I go? Where'd I go? Okay. She's she going to try to keep it. Glory to God. Y'all see that? All right, write this one thing down. Uh, so the first thing we said, I got to, don't let the enemy nullify the word coming out, your man and woman of God's mouth. There's going to be people that stand up here and minister, it won't be me. Don't, don't let your opinion of them block what the word has for you. But Y'all know Dr. Mills? He passed away. Do you realize the first time I saw him, I had a perception of him that I didn't want to talk to him. And it was in the airport. I'll never forget it. We both were going to the conference. This was, my, was it my first time there at that one real quick? 
it wasn't my first time, but I saw him, saw him get in his bag, saw he had Gucci bag and all that stuff. And I was like, see, I, told, I looked at my wife, I said, see, see, them folk, they stuck up folk. You can tell they stuck up. I said, I don't even think they spoke to us. Did they speak to us? Because he was right over there and, we, and he didn't know us from Adam. And he was just getting his stuff. And now all of a sudden I had a perception. Look how he act. He must be stuck up. And look who was my friend. Yeah, we're good friends. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, look who became your friend, the one that you thought was stuck up, was the one that God used to minister to you. See, sometimes your perception of people can be off because of what's rolling in your little brain. Let's just make that. Can I leave this? And we'll fix it next week. I'm going to tell you something before I go. That's been on my heart. I've been working on another sermon for you. Black people, we got to stop saying it. Well, it is true. There are some people in society that ain't right there. Amen. I don't want to say black people. All people got to get that. There are some people, we used to call folk, oh, they're just so crazy. But no, some folk are just crazy. They narcissistic. And we're wondering where this behavior come from. It comes from the enemy. And we're playing like we don't see it. Oh, they're believers. How can a believer be narcissistic in the body of Christ? It can't be. Those two don't mix. Somebody say amen. So we got to stop covering up what is not of God. And we got to start saying, you know that ain't right. Somebody hates it, we, we go along with it. We know that ain't right. Somebody say amen. How about we start doing that? Just say, no, nah, I ain't going to be a part of that mess. Somebody say amen. amen. Why? Because, see, you don't need anything to block you from hearing the word of God. Amen. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. All right, there's some folk, man, there's some folk that made up, uh, uh, that has some stuff about, uh, <laughs> there's another pastor I know, great man of God. And, man, if I had listened to them, I would have never received from them, from this fellow. Somebody say amen. amen. You got to be careful. I was in church once, and I'll leave with that. I was in church once, and I told folk this, uh, you know, I think people, sometimes the enemy tries to get you in this, a place. And so somebody called me one time. I got to go. Somebody called me and said, Pastor, oh, I wasn't passing then. I was just on board, I mean, on, on staff. And they said, you need to hear this because this was this what he said. You know, I was like, what? And he said, yeah. And he, he made these statements. And I said, won't you hear these? You're going to, you going to, you know, you need to hear it because it's going to change stuff. I'm almost done whoever phone that is. Yeah. And, you know, I know what you're saying. You should be done right now. Glory to God. Okay, I'm, I'm almost done. Glory to God. All right. Uh, I tell my last story and I'm done. And so the guy came over with a cassette tape. I don't know if I have told you. He came over with a cassette tape. He put the tape in. And he said, and see, now he's trying to get the seed in me. Why? Because now it's going to block me from hearing my man of God, right? And so I listened to it. I said, because I wasn't at that service. I said, so let me see what's going on. And I, I said, hmm. I said, that's when you had a cassette, you rewind. I said, rewind again. Huh. Man, how about we do it one more time? And I said, I, uh, you know what, I, uh, I'll let you come over here, and I probably shouldn't, but I, I don't hear what you're saying. <laughs> and, and, and you try to mess me up, right? I said, that's you, man, that's you. You eat that, you go on about your way, but I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna get in there. And I said, I done did too much by listening, giving you credibility right, right, by right. just listening to you and by letting you come through my house, you know? See, the word of God is critical, and so you can't let somebody take you off. And see, for many years after that, I was able to sit and receive. Why? Because I didn't receive the negative seed from someone else. Yeah, I'm out of time, and I thank you for yours. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Is God good? Y'all get anything? Hey, next week's going to be a zinger. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that already. Glory to God, because I did not. I mean, we got someplace, but we didn't get all the way where we're going to go. Somebody say amen to that. All right, now remember, we're, gonna, we're in a battle. We're gonna be, I'm going to be veering this ship real soon 
to under, so that you understand the spiritual battle that we may be in, that you are in, so that you can win. Amen. You can walk in your victory every day. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, every day, every day. All, I do, all I do. I think that's a song, eh? All I do is win. I don't know who it's by. Don't look at me. But I think they said, all I do is win. The, was bad song. Okay, I'm out. <laughs> Baby girl said, no. <laughs> and she said, don't do it. I'll protect my pastor. <laughs> no. Glory to God. Amen. Some stuff we ain't supposed Thank to be you. doing. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. See, that's fighting together. Amen. She, she realized he don't know. There was something else I said. I didn't have a clue what I was saying. And somebody said, no, pastor. No, 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 no. No, that ain't cool, bro. You know, and I was like, well, what would that really mean? And then, see, there are, I'm in a different generation. So, you know, sometimes you try to be cool, and you don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> Amen. And you say something that's just totally off the wall, and everybody looking like, that ain't cool. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. But I did get that right one time. Amen. <laughs> Man, that's gone, right? right? Okay. All right. Well, God is good. Amen. Heads are bad, eyes are closed. Man, I'm, man, God is good. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for your word today. We thank you, Heavenly Father, because we are becoming united together, unified together as the body of Christ should be. Heavenly Father, take this word. Let us Help us to take this word and use it for your glory, for your kingdom, for your honor. God, we just want to love the way that you say love. We want to do the things right. We want to get it right. Help us to do the things that we should for your kingdom, for your glory, for your honor, so that your name is glorified. That's all we want to do, Father, is glorify your most holy name. All we want to do is exalt you because you are God and God alone. We thank you, Heavenly Father, because we have the seed of the word. And the seed of the word, because we have the seed of the word, we have everything we need in life has been provided for. Father, thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the Holy Spirit of God who leads, guides, and directs us into all truth. In Jesus' name, we thank you so much. We thank you for working in us the will to do of your good pleasure. Thank you, Father, because you are God and God alone. And because you are our God, you already promised that you would never leave nor forsake us. And for that, we give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Heads are still bowed, eyes are still closed. If you are here today and you don't know Jesus, you have not made him Lord of your life. And some of us as believers, we have not, we have strayed away from him. We have done things outside the will of God that God, you know, is classified as sin. This is your moment and your time to renounce that, to ask God to forgive you of that, to repent from that so that you can walk into every and all things that God has for you. If that is you today, I want you to stand up right where you are. You've never met Jesus. You've never had a relationship with him. You want to make that relationship with him right now. Right now is your time. And it's also a time for you, the believer. You who have moved away from God, you have done things outside the will of God, this is your moment, this is your time to get it right. In Jesus' name, if that is you, I want you to stand up on your feet and receive all and everything that God has for you today. In Jesus' name, Father, we give you praise, glory, and honor. We thank you for each and every one. We thank you, dear God, for working in us the will to do of your good pleasure. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, glory to God. Amen. Amen. Say amen. amen. All right. One of the things I pastor won't do is make you, I can't make a dog eat. Boy, if I could make you eat this word, I, I, boy, I'd hold you down, pour it all in you. But I can't do that. It doesn't work that way. And you're going to find that out through this battle. It doesn't work like that. You've got to receive the word. Understand, believe, and receive. Understand the word, believe the word, and receive the word. Say it again behind me. Understand the word. All right, you got to go out of here today receiving what God has given you today. Amen. Don't let the enemy steal away what God has put in you. Amen. Don't let the enemy steal that away. Once he steals it away, it's gone. He gave you a seed word. Guard your heart. Don't let anything or anybody come and talk you out of what God's word says. Somebody say amen. Does that make sense? 
All right, well, God is a good God. Hey, I want to go ahead. We're off air. No. All right, I want to go ahead, even though it's a little, uh, well, no, I tell you what, because we don't want to rush through anything, and especially communion, I'm not going to rush through that. So how about we just do that next week? Somebody say amen. Is that all right, gentlemen, ladies, ushers? Uh, we'll do that next week and uh, prepare your heart and be ready. It's, uh, the Bible says as often as you do. That's right. Amen. We could do it every Sunday. Yeah. We could do it every other Sunday. We don't have to be religious and do it on the Sunday. The more we become religious, the more we move away from God. Whether it's in songs, whether it's when I teach, whether, it, whatever it is. We have to be careful that we don't become religious. That means rituals. Do it like this. Do it like this. Four slow, four, two slow, two fast, four fast, whatever. Offering this time. Amen. This is this time. Does that make sense? All right. God is an awesome God. Amen. Well, here's another form of worship is giving. Somebody say amen. Amen. If this is your first time being here at the Abundant Life, and if this is the first time you're watching me today, we want to give you the opportunity to partner with this ministry, to be a part of what we are doing here. What God, I don't want to say what we're doing, what God is doing here. Right. You can partner with this ministry. We have three ways that you can be a, play, be a part with this ministry. Number one, you can give. If you're here in person today, the ushers are coming down the middle and the side aisles, and they're ready for you to give. They're ready to give you an offering envelope. Only put a cash or check in that, please. Only cash or a check. You can also go online. You can go online and you can give at www.alcc1.org. Or you can text to give. Text to give is one of our most popular ways to give now. You can text to give ALCC, the dollar amount, to 84321. You can text ALCC, the dollar amount, to 84321. And we just thank God for each and every one who has given whatever the amount. We're excited. We're delighted that you are part of it. We're, you're part of, of the giving, the worship and giving. You're part of what God has done here today in Jesus' name. And we thank you so much. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, man, what an awesome time. All right. Hey, we're going to get to a point where we're fighting. We, we know the fight that we're fighting is a good fight of faith. You're going to fight for your babies. You know we got to fight for our babies. Amen. You're going to have to fight. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. See, because this, Dennis, this is how you do with, with the enemy. You rebuke, you resist, and you remove. That's all you do. When the devil shows up in any form, he, you resist him, you rebuke him, you remove him. Somebody say amen. amen. And watch God do his thing. Amen. amen. Are y'all ready? Yes, man, whenever there's, listen to this, I'm going to tell you this before we go. Whenever there's division, the devil is working. Amen. Wherever there's unity, God is there. Amen. Whenever there's strife or you're off of the purpose of God, you know the enemy's in it. Amen. amen. Any, any, look, look. I'm going to say something a little strong to you. Anytime you sin, you believe the lie. Anytime you sin, you believe the lie. Because the Bible says the devil is the father of all lies. That's right. So the only time you sin is when you believe something he said. Amen. And then, how many of y'all have believed something he said? Oh, yeah. And you kicked yourself, didn't you? And you were like, man, how could I have done that? Why? Because, he, you know, because he lied to you. He told you this was going to be good, and it's not. Somebody say amen. amen. All right. Could y'all go ahead and sing for me? Well, as we, the ushers are going and taking up our offering, amen. You can pass the, oh, how we do it? Ain't that how we do it? Oh. You can pass the harvest baskets. There they come. Glory to God. Har harvest baskets, they're not coming. Oh, stand up. Oh, you're supposed to stand up. Oh, oh, glory. <laughs> That's why y'all looking at me like, what? This is different, you know. Okay, stand up, glory to God. I'm sorry. Amen. Y'all got, Nate was supposed to be up here today anyway. And uh, you can tell, y'all pray for me. Amen. Is God good? 
All right, God is busy changing your life for his glory, for his honor, for his kingdom. Somebody say amen. amen. Hey, we don't get it all right, but we're going to get it right. Amen. When you find yourself off, get back on. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Rebuke the devil. Resist him and remove him anytime he shows up. Y'all, y'all, you Amen. Don't be scared. Resist as if, you know, sometimes I got to tell you, no, that's the devil. Glory to God. You do, you do, just resist. He ain't doing, he ain't nothing but a big liar. Girl wrote a song one time. She said, Tell me lies, tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. The Bible says that the devil is the father of the lies. When he speaketh the lie, he speaketh it from himself because he's the father of it. Somebody say amen. amen. Glory to God. The only reason the devil, I, this I do tell you, the only reason the devil will tell you the truth is to get you to bite a lie. The only reason he'll tell you the truth is to lie to you. He's got to go back to lying. Somebody say amen. Well, God is good, man. Hey, we're going to let you go. Oh, I guess we're not going to sing. Okay, praise the Lord. <laughs> they did, oh, they didn't help you out? But. <laughs> All right. Well, hey. Hey, we just want to... Uh, I tell you what, we just want to thank you guys. Uh, you've been a blessing today. Let's give them a great big hand. <laughs> Whoa, they were great today. Hey, what a great job. Hey, don't go nowhere now. <laughs> I'm still going to use you. It's going to come along. <laughs> Amen. For any announcements today, any announcements today, what was, do we have something? All right, let's go ahead and put our announcements up. We thank God for you and you. You can be seated just for announcements, and after that, the worship team, y'all going to be ready? All right. Yeah, come on, worship team, be ready. Glory to God. Go ahead, give me an come on, turn around. Glory. Blessings, blessings. Every time I turn around, blessings on blessings. Hello, and welcome to the Abundant Life Christian Center, where our vision is to see you focused, faithful, fruitful and fulfilled. We welcome each and every one here with us and those who may be streaming online. And if this is your first time visiting, please don't forget it to fill out to your Connect card we so we can stay connected to you. And here are your Sunday announcements. It's less than one week away. It's this Friday, September 13th, One Heart Marriage Ministry Fixer Upper. The first one was awesome, so part two will be even more awesome. So building your house on a solid foundation is the goal. And again, it's this Friday, September 13th at 7 p.m. But today, I need you to go register at www.alcc1.org for this awesome fellowship. Hey, Saints, you may know how to save money, but our quarterly coupon class will help you save more. The last class is September 28th, and the first two were totally awesome. So please go to www.alcc1.org today and register for our last quarterly coupon class. We'll see you there September 28th. October is coming again, and that's going to be Pastor's Appreciation Month. It's going to be all of October. First, we'll have October 5th, Pastor Jack's birthday, and then October 27th, we'll have a Pastor Appreciation Dinner. But thanks for all you do here at the Abundant Life Christian Center. Women of Abundance, Queen Esther is approaching. It's a Women of Abundance mother and daughter bus trip going to be held May 2nd, 2020, showtime, 11 a.m. So please go to www.alcc1.org to prepay and get ready for this awesome bus trip, Queen Esther Women of Abundance Mother and Daughter Bus Trip. If you're interested in joining one of our teams here at the Abundant Life Christian Center, Life Store, Hospitality, Cafe, Life Kids, Media, Marketing, Photography, and more, please visit the front desk and you will be directed accordingly. Again, join one of our teams here at the Abundant Life Christian Center. 
Now, don't forget to stay connected with us via text by texting ALCC to 313131. And we'd like everyone to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and subscribe on our YouTube, podcast, and Spotify channels. Now, please stand to your feet as we welcome our very own Pastor Jack Miller. so much for coming. All right. Glory to God. Thank you for being here today. I pray that you received. I pray that the word that you heard today will change your life forever. Amen. Take it home. Marinate on it. The scriptures that you received today, go home, restudy them, go back over them so that they get deep within your heart. And then when they get in your heart, protect what was sown into you today. Somebody say amen. Don't let folk talk you out of it. Amen. Is God good? All right. Now, if this is your first time being with us, thank you so much. I want to thank you. Uh, we have Miss Q Daniels. She's standing in the back. She's waving at us right now. Glory to God. She wants you to come back in the back with her because she wants to be able to love on you like we do just to say thank you for being a part. So if this is your first time, go ahead and take your belongings. And if you could move right back right at this time to Q, thank you again for being here. Anybody on my left? Left. Anybody on my right? Amen. Okay, praise the Lord. Okay. Oh, there they are. Glory to Give them a big, big hand, y'all. Amen. God is good. Oh, more. Amen. More, more, more. Amen. God is an awesome God. Thank you all for being here on this day. Go home and celebrate Jesus Christ in the right way. All throughout this week, tell somebody about him. Tell somebody about how good he is, how awesome he is, and how he can turn their life around if they just give it to him. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. amen.